Hello, everyone. Welcome back to RATS Technical Sessions webinars. We are here today uh, to talk about VFDs. And I don't really have much to say other than to, you know, just go to our website, sign up for our mailing list so you can stay up to date with our events. And I will turn it over to Jared now so we won't waste any more time. Thanks, Andrew. Yep, um, I'm Jared Janata, and I'm volunteering with the RATS group as director here. Now with Ralph uh, in full-blown retirement mode, I'll be uh, chipping in a little more with the technical session support and uh, try to take some of that lead role here to make sure these are running smoothly, and especially uh, I'm really looking forward to when we get back in person and, uh, and uh, whether that's this year or next, it's uh, obviously something we're all looking forward to. So big welcome everyone attending our monthly uh, technical presentation series on all things rotating equipment as always uh, we have people tuning in from alberta canada and actually around the world now so that is awesome to see all the attendees and presenters um, cover a diverse background of rotating equipment expertise so the more we share that knowledge the better off we'll be um, Couple technical items, any issues with audio visual? I'm sure everyone's been doing the webinars for the last year here. So, you know, try to clear your browser tabs, um, you know, turn off other applic applications if you're glitching out or having issues. The other devices might be taking up bandwidth, um, you know, jump in and out of the presentation. I don't know, shake your computer, whatever works for you. Um, we've all been dealing with that stuff. So your microphone, Phones are going to be muted during this presentation, but you can send in uh, your questions using the chat function on the side dashboard there or the questions tab. Um, during the Q&A period, we can also unmute you if you want to give the question a little more context. Um, happy to do that and get the conversation going. Um, we'll try to get everyone's questions answered throughout the online presentation today. Worst case, um, we can continue that conversation on our LinkedIn page or by reaching out directly, we'll get you in touch with Michael and make sure you got all your um, Q&A answered there. We will have some polls today um, that will be posted during the presentation, so please do participate in that. Um, the presentation, as always, will be recorded for later viewing and it will be accessible on our brand new website that Andrew developed great job on that please do check it out and uh you know send us your feedback on it if there's something missing something we can add you know this is all for you guys the viewers so anything we can do to improve um with our website with our delivery of these presentations what we're presenting let us know we'll we'll definitely appreciate the feedback and incorporate that um okay and additionally we do have some more info um today on the handouts tab of the sidebar here. So you can download those for, for yourself to take a look at a little more in-depth information. You can also visit um, the website as well for Vitor. Um, please hold on after the presentation ends for this webinar. As I said, we have a survey, great spot to throw in your feedback, comments, all that type of stuff. Uh, and we do review it, so it's, it's appreciated. Our next RATS technical presentation will be next month, June 17th, uh, by Peter Dufresne from EPT Clean Oil. And that's going to be on uh, titled A Paradigm Shift in Gas Turbine Lubricate Maintenance. So very interesting um, stuff there. So please do sign up for that and stay tuned for our July uh, presentation announcements. Um, and I will say any folks on, on the call today or that you know of interested for future online presentations, future in person, MRO white papers uh, for 2022, as this year is just, it, everything's very tight. We, it, it, it's, it'll be difficult to coordinate that and we don't wanna rush things um, and we wanna make sure it's a good event. So 2022 MRO stuff, presenters, white papers, send them in. Um, even if you got someone in mind to nominate that's a little gun shy, Throw us their info, maybe we can persuade them that uh, we, we would appreciate the knowledge to be shared. Now, uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest presenter today, Michael Lasenko. He is Managing Director of Vitor PWR. And I might be saying that name wrong, so he'll correct me after this. Um, I'm trying to put a French accent on it, but um, 
Uh, Vitor PWR's technologies, products, and services provide a vector pathway for businesses' environmental, social, and governance, which is very key these days to all business. Um, they develop tech, products, and services that help reduce capital and operational costs, improve productivity, and use less power. So all good things that are going to help our industry and environment and you know, keep the North American and Canadian market ahead of the game here. Uh, Michael himself leads a diverse team. Uh, he's an executive technical sales professional with 30 years plus experience in research, IP development, product management, marketing, and sales. Uh, he's technology focused on the energy sector with adaptive of alternative energy power generation with wa waste energy recovery systems, their application, and the designs thereof. So with that said, I will pass it over to Michael and we'll get it going. Uh, thanks, Jared. I really appreciate it. Can everybody see my screen? That looks good, yeah. Okay, good. Let's go full screen with that. Okay. Good, so, uh, and Jared, it basically is, it's Vittori Power, uh, PWR, really, it's our people, it's our willingness, and it's our responsibility uh, for good business. So um, really, we are the, I am the Managing uh, Director for Vittori Power, and we actually have a partnership agreement with Anatronica Santerno out of Italy. Um, I've had the privilege to work with the product for probably the past 15 years. So today's session, we're really gonna talk about what makes a good BFD, specifying a drive for multiple applications and sectors, and very much so, it'll be really based upon product I've used it in the past, but you can really, the narrative will really talk about what makes a good drive product. So you may not know Santerno, but I hope you'll um, be open to the concept of really what makes a good drive. Let's just run this poll real quick, just to see what people are interested in honing in on. Okay, so what do you want to know about specifying VFDs in this session? So, you know, more of a general overview, or do you have specific applications you want to hear more about, um, you know, for talking points? So fans, pumps, crushers, HVAC. Uh, so anyways, feel free to, to run that. Um, I see votes are coming in pretty quick. Most of everybody's answered, about three quarters. So wow. thanks for the quick responses. Let's let us run for a few more seconds and then we'll uh, see what everybody um, is most, most interested in. Yeah, it looks like the votes have stopped coming in. Oh, one more, a few more. Still rolling. Okay, we are going to cut this off in three, two, one. Okay, now looking at this, about 54% general overview, 23% are looking at fans. 69% are interested in pumps, 19% on crushers, and 23% on HVAC. So uh, there you have it. I've closed the poll and you can go back to presenting your pres slide. Okay. And I'll be back later. Okay. So uh, when you specify the VFD, we really want to look at the pedigree and how long the company's actually been in business. Uh, Santerno has been 50 years manufacturing just north of Bologna in Italy. And what's interesting about the company is they do design, build, and manufacture right in Europe. So they don't contract out to a third-party company. Um, what's interesting as well, too, is they've got over 500,000 inverters sold worldwide. And because they do industrial automation as well as basically renewable energy, they got 6.8 gigawatts of an installed base. So that is a lot of power electronics running in the field, so they're a good pedigree, good product with a, basically a good history of design, engineering background. Hey, Michael? Yes. Uh, your screen's not sharing. Oh. Why is that? Hmm. Okay, hang on. Hmm. How do I share? It says sharing. It says sharing. Shows. Is it, is it on now? There we go. We can see your, um, yep. Yeah. Good. Let's go full screen and there we go. There we go. You see it? Okay, good. Thanks, Andrew. So when specifying a BFD, we want to look at a pedigree, how many years in business. Um, Santerno's have been around for the past 50. 
same plant, just really north of Bologna in Italy. Manufactured in Italy by themselves. Okay. Um, applicationally now, um, you know, a lot of people talk about fans, talk about pumps, talk about crushers. Uh, any good drive manufacturer or drive product should have be able to go multi-sector, have the capability, the application knowledge, and the engineering support to be able to support you in helping to get that correct product. Really, it's rotating equipment in a variety of application settings. So, I mean, I did a lot of work in the oil and gas sector, a lot of work in the mills and the mines in, in my uh, tenure. As well, too, we're looking at, at drive product. Um, what's really important, I think, when you're specifying a drive is, does the manufacturer have the capability to go from essentially single-digit horsepower to large horsepower, like in the thousands of horsepower? So we know that as we expand, or if I start moving down a pathway with the drive in my plant, in my process, in my OEM manufacturing, that I can keep using the same product. There's a lot of time spent training your staff internally, um, building customer confidence as well too. So having that capability to really have a product that really can grow with you and grow into multiple sectors, I think is very important when specifying a product. Uh, voltage class. So, you know, coming out of the oil patch here, we use a lot of 460 volt, but we could be doing some HVAC work. It could be 230 volt, uh, uh, three phase in, in small, industrial. We could be 600 volt out in the actual field as well too. Ontario, parts of Saskatchewan. What's interesting as well too is having a product that's made for 690 volt, which is typically used in Nordic countries. I've been in the field a number of times and the line voltage can be in excess of 600 volts here in Canada. A lot of times will be at the end of the line. Most plants, mills, mines, they tend to have that end of the line process from the power generation. So they will have a tendency to sometimes bump the voltage up to account for voltage loss. So having the ability to have a product that can be capable to 690 volts, I think is very important. Um, so in the event that the, there is a cell, a swell on the actual line, or if we do have to up the voltage a bit, the power electronics is turning your equipment can withstand that. We have a very large power range within the actual process as well too. So in a 600 volt product, it's a thousand horsepower. And as well too, a lot of times, let's say when we're doing punch pressing or mill processing, or any kind of eccentric loads, a built-in brake chopper or a braking circuit. So what a brake chopper really is, is the ability to take excess energy that comes off, let's say a punch press, off uh, maybe a crane stopping rapidly. We can dispel the energy through a separate circuit, or we would call it a fifth transistor. So let's say, you know, you're looking for a dry product. You're not a packager yourself, you're not an OEM. We can, is the manufacturer capable of building the product into large cabinetry? Sometimes anybody who's done working in water and wastewater industry, they'll look for something called a multi-pulse or the ability to have a low harmonic input side or even an active front end. So any good manufacturer should have the capability of packaging the product into a very large or complex network or cabinetry as well too, based upon indoors, outdoors as well. So when you're looking at the products as well too, a lot of people say, you know, I'm built for the oil patch or I'm built for industrial. So looking at a product, you wanna have a BFD, uh, Santerno really comes, it's a full metal enclosure. There's really no plastic box here. The boards are varnished or conformal coated. And Conformal coating is really a type of polymer or varnish going onto the power electronics. So if I've got a little bit of a noxious environment, let's say we're out in a wastewater treatment plant, you get that bit of that, that actual caustic in the air. This prevents the copper from turning that ugly green from corrosion. So a little bit of corrosion built in as well too. Very wide operating temperature as well too. So normally without extra heat or cooling, it'll run minus 10 to plus 55 degrees centigrade. Um, I've used this product in northern Alberta, packaged with some heaters to minus 45. I've been down in California, um, just north of Death Valley. We put these on some large injection pumps and it was plus 56, 57. We did some packaging out in Oman one time as well too. 
uh, so plus 60. So the drive itself should be able to withstand a large amount of environmental. Overload for two minutes is really important too. Having capability in the event of, um, let's say crushers, which is really important. Instantaneously, if there's a jam in your, in your mechanical equipment, can the electronics deliver and actually withstand that type of shock? Good. And as well too, this actually is, product is capable of marine application as well too. So if you're doing any work that's sailed in BC on, on the cranes, on the offshore platforms, it does have an actual true um, maritime uh, DMV NORT rating. EMC filters is becoming really important as well too. A lot of times, due to the fact we have a lot of computer industries, you know, computers in our buildings, the filters themselves in the drives prevent noise from coming on the line uh, and actually maintaining power quality. And any good drive should have a good warranty. Manufacturers should stand behind the product. Uh, this product here comes with a three-year warranty. And we haven't worked with it for a lot of years. We had very little, if any, uh, true warranty failures. So as well too, for environmental side. So a lot of times, sometimes we have drives that come in our plants, HVAC side especially, um, we have drives on the wall, usually multiple um, vendors or manufacturers. So having the ability to actually put a small little kit on the bottom and then mount that drive on the wall in order to meet the regular capabilities for just wall mounting or NEMA 1. This product here can go up to 400 horsepower in 460 or 450 and 600 volt. So having that ability, if something fails inevitably in a school, in a shopping mall on HVAC, um, the drive can bolt on the wall, tie in, and basically requires no other extra but packaging. So just a straight NEMA 1 kit for the cables to go on to. Heat sink segregation. Uh, sometimes we're in a tight spot, sometimes we're outside. When we did work down in California, it, you know, it would get to 43, 44 degrees centigrade. And that's plus the sun heating onto it. So we actually, in most of the dry packages on the large injection outside, we would put them in a separate heat sink. Front side sealed, keep the dust out. Back side large fans. We could actually push the heat sink or push the heat generating areas of the VFD into a separate enclosure that would actually be cooled by large fans. Um, not a lot of companies do this, some do, but um, this is actually the product. So from a specification perspective, can we segregate the actual airflow? The flip side of this is if you can't do this, you have to have very large fans and cooling within the main cabinetry. So let's get the heat out of the, into an area where I can actually deal with it. Um, the Centurion product is called a science penta. Penta meaning can do five applications built in. So IFD or voltage control, very simple vector control. I actually go fast, I go slow. Really, this is how drives all started. Vector torque, I can get a little more torque out of the actual application. I'm actually aligning almost like a centralist encoder. Field oriented control, I actually have a have an actual encoder for feedback. Um, this is really interesting. If you look at the picture at the bottom, we'll talk a little more about this. With some of the newer drive technologies, you can actually put the encoder on the drive and replace a DC drive in a DC motor assembly with an AC motor and achieve the same type of results. DC drives were very popular at one time. Um, and they've lasted a long time. We still see quite a bit of VFDs or DC drives being uh, replaced by the AC version so that the product should be capable of this as well too. Uh, synchronous application, um, the drive itself can be used for the newer style permanent magnet motors, which is interesting. So a lot of PMM motors, they'll give you a lot smaller, very good torque application. Um, so we can do it with either a sensor or now sensorless as well too. Now this is probably one of the most unique applications is regenerative. The drive itself can be used as a regenerative feeder and this really means that I can actually have the capability so of having it line interactive or almost acting like a solar inverter 
So a solar inverter is essentially a line interactive drive, um, same hardware. So rather than let's say put the power into a breaking resistor, I can actually use the grid itself as a line interactive point. So when we look at our field oriented control, or really a DC drive emulator, um, the drive is capable of, with the, with the firmware applications, to be able to run as a DC drive emulator. So if anybody's got any DC drives in their plants or controls, AC drives should be able to replace this as well. Um, so we always talk about energy savings. So this is probably one of the biggest and unique features is it has extremely high power conversion. So it's 98.5% efficient. So it's very, very well designed, very good software. So it's able to basically use power efficiently. As well too, it's got a built-in energy counter. And when we look at some of the vector torque controls or ability to control the motors very specifically, we can actually minimize the energy need to turn that motor as well too. Uh, smart voltage control. Um, this is the ability to deal with a eccentric load. Let's say we've got a large fan in HVC application. A lot of times, let's say that fan's spinning, it's got some inertial, inertial in the actual fan, it's almost like a flywheel. That smart voltage controls allows us to actually deal with that incident energy trapped in there and the drive won't trip, because obviously if the drive trips, the fan goes off, I have to send service guys out. Regenerative bidirectional, so this is, I probably spent a good portion of my career on regenerative drives. This is the ability for the drive to work bidirectionally. And we applied this first really on pump jacks. So rather than actually use a braking resistor, we actually use a four quadrant or an AFE type drive to actually capture that downstream energy and put power back on the grid as well. Now, when we look at, at, at um, Regen or, or AFE drives, um, they actually have one very unique feature. They, by design, are low harmonic. Uh, a lot of times, I know Fortis here is coming out, if you apply for a new service, you want to use a VFD, they will ask you, what's your harmonic spectrum, what's your harmonic count? So AFE drives or regenerative drives actually are low harmonic. THD is less than 3% and our power factor is always at one. So if you've got large plant type applications, you've got lots of large motors, these don't require a filter. There's no separate harmonic filter per se. The drive itself is designed to be low harmonic or line interactive. Um, looking at drive application wise, they should have good specification, ISO certifications, as well as built for multiple markets within the actual world. Um, I think Santorino is quite unique here. A lot of companies will have a marine drive or they will have a this specification drive. Santorino builds one product and certifies it for every type of application. So they design and engineer extremely well. So why build five products when I can build one, build it very well, but certify it for all the applications? I think that's just good design and engineering application side. So looking at drives, make sure you have very good certifications for one product. Um, standard drive applications, uh, motor protection, S-curve uh, trajectory. This really is, prevents that jerking start. So again, less mechanical stress. So let's say I've got a large inertial load I'm starting. Maybe I've got big cast fan on HPC application. Because I can program how I start that drive, on my acceleration point, I can have less mechanical stress and it will basically prevent it, that jerking start. And we've probably all seen pump starting or fan starting, and there's that little bit of that stutter off the initial start. This really prevents that as well too. Silo modulation. This is an interesting feature for specification and especially for HVAC. If I look at sometimes my larger fans and my make it return air units or my air units, the fan itself, that motor, it has that real whining, whining noise. That Think of that fan duct as a great big large organ pipe 
when that motor whines, it can almost sometimes resonate or echo in that tubing and be really, really loud. What we can do with silent modulation is it actually quiets the motor down to the point where you don't hear that. I know a lot of times I've been in buildings and you'll hear that whine of the actual air ducts. This will remove that. Within a drive application as well too, you really wanna have some kind of historical faults. What, let's say the drive trips off in the middle of the night, your maintenance guys go back in the morning, they need to be able to see and look what's gone on in that product as well. Um, this is probably one of the biggest features I've always really, really worked hard to get for it in a BFD. One control board for the, for the whole line. Not all manufacturers do this. Um, this becomes really critical. You've got a large plant, you've got multiple operating pumps, motors, fans. What if the main drive on your main process in the plant goes down? Your process cost is three, four, hundred thousand dollars an hour, two hundred thousand dollars an hour, but you've got fans, small fans running in your office space um, that basically keeps the offices cool. You literally could take the control board out of the small drive, reflash it, put it in the new drive in the event of an emergency. And we've actually done this before. Uh, taking the actual small HVAC drive offline, people in the office complain a little bit, but the plant's back up and running. And then next maintenance cycle, next time you actually have time, we'll actually get things back up and running. So yeah, it, this is a really important feature. I know other companies where it's been like, well, I've got the same brand, but the control board, sometimes there is a lot of changes across the line. One control board, standard across the whole line. Uh, power down, this is a really interesting feature that you know I've used several times. Because we have a power down sequence, and basically a BFD itself has a large DC bus for the ability to store energy um, in this large capacitor bank. If the power bumps, you can actually program the system to use the kinetic energy in the rotating load. And as it slows down, it'll actually stay and hold on to the motor, power comes back up and away it goes. So really it prevents that loss of process. And I think where this becomes really critical is I'm pumping slurries or I'm pumping a, a thicker solution. You don't want that pump to get actually plugged up. This could save you a couple hours of maintenance cycle. In the event you have a quick little power bump, it'll slow down, but it, it'll still keep running. And then picks up and keeps going because it, it's controlling the load. In the event I power goes down far enough, I've been able to pump out enough that it may save you several hours. A speed search or, or speed catcher, power drops off, HVAC, use this lots on HVAC. Big fans running, power drops off, and of course, the fan keeps running because there's a lot of inertia in there. Power comes back on a minute later, and it's able to actually sense, catch the load, and keep on going, so I don't have to wait till it fully winds down. Uh, we did one application for a plant they were manufacturing back backfield insulation. It would take them 37 minutes for the actual main impeller to go to zero speed. And then we know they had some power bumps, sometimes two, three times a day in the summer. So we were able to actually put the product on, apply it, power bump, it would catch it and keep on running. Uh, plant people were quite happy because you get a couple of shutdowns, a couple of power bumps in an afternoon, that's a couple hours of lost production time. We were able to save them. Um, interesting feature, a lot of times drives now, there's other processes involved as well too. So having a little bit of PID control. So there's actually two separate PID controllers built into the drive. So you can use the IO itself. So if you've got a little small process, this is almost that level of PID control or or process control uh, built in. Prohibit speed. This is an important feature to make sure you have specified as well too. A lot of times there's a natural resonance within mechanical devices. And I mean, when I took engineering, the classic picture was that bridge just shaking on the river at a certain point. So if we know at a certain point, the mechanics will resonate, shake, vibrate, you can program in that jump speed 
I think it's a very important feature to have in your VFTs. So this will prevent any kind of mechanical resonance. So you can essentially jump past or prohibit those speeds from being ran. Um, as well, IO, this does actually have some basic IEC type of function block programming. I've got a little bit of process. I have to have, you know, pre-charge pump start first, give me my actual uh, validation, start that, start my next process. So I can do some basic digital manipulation using a built-in PLC. Important feature in VFDs. Um, this is interesting too, uh, crane type applications as well too. Within the crane application, we can control the actual brakes, but as well too, we can have an anti-sway function. I, this is really interesting. The ability for, as I'm going up and down and the motor's controlling the actual, if he's controlling the motor for the actual crane, it can be programmed in such a uh, such a manner it will prevent the swaying of the actual load point. Remember, if I'm pulling on the motor and I have good control of my drive, I can control what the motor will do and almost counteract that type of sway. Uh, your CPU should always be expanded. So our main control board should, should have some points of expansion slots when we're specifying drives. Um, CPU, obviously, extra I.O. because I've got that little bit of built-in PLC, I've got some actual uh, PID control built in, having extra I.O. I think is very, is, is very important. If I'm at the end of a point, I'm in my process, I can now add a card in my, in my drive and get a little bit of I.O. done rather than put in a full PLC or extra I.O. Um, speed sensors as well too, so remember we talked about field oriented control or our DC drive control. Um, we products should be able to support pretty much a wide scope of, of encoder carts that are available in the marketplace because, you know, I don't know what you have, so we make it fairly broad in terms of what is available for um, encoder carts. Um, a lot of times when we have that PLC built in, a lot of plants have some type of control network or control schema that they run the plant on. So within that expansion board, we can put in a pretty large amount of type of IO field bus cards. Um, newest is this really is the ability for internet of things. Uh, Santero does have its own version of IOT. Um, it's been running since 2007. It really comes out of their solar side. So the ability to actually cloud data manage and grab all the data from the drive and from your process. So this is really interesting. It goes back to the main platform site, and then you as a client can just log in, grab all the data trended application-wise. And again, these are all put through uh, back to a natural data logger assembly. So there's two types of data logger that come with the drive itself. So we can actually have an embedded or an actual small bridge mini. So now our data loggers can then port the data into the actual cloud. And then whether, so whether you have one bridge or multiple drives and then back to the website. And again, the product products is built by one company. It's not outsourced. There's no third party manufacturers as well. Andrew? Hello, okay. I'm just waiting for my web. Oh, there we go. The webcam's back up. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, so that was a lot of information and amazing in amount of information. So I'm hoping that uh, people were awake and following along and um, you know, just, I don't know if everybody's in, in shock, but uh, we're just waiting for some Q&A to come in. But I mean, some of the stuff that I found really interesting was, you know, the regenerative part of it, you know, instead of wasting the power you know in uh you know resistive type of way and just you you know generating heat you know the fact that you can actually take that power and share it back uh you know is pretty interesting i don't can you elaborate a little bit more on that okay so i mean so we did you know originally you know if you look at some of the pump track drives originally they would have a large braking resistor so pump track goes up my motor over speeds it falls down it would go to it would go to an actual uh resistor it would, it would burn off so 
the four quadrant wise or the AFE drive would actually use the grid itself as the braking resistor. So you can actually put power back on. Um, so from let's say in, in a plant application, you would actually let's say have that in the plant running. When it generated power back, you would use it within the actual plant. So obviously here's my power meter on one end, you can actually save energy. Um, applicationally, we were approached many years ago by a small hydro company. They had a motor, so they had a pump. They would use the pump as a turbine. So they were actually overspeeding the pump to generate power. We hooked the drive up to it and we were actually became a small scale hydro provider. So it's, so an AFE drive, it's bi, the power is bi-directional in the actual application. Let's say if I have an escalator, I'm running up an escalator and as I'm slowing down, I can generate power up as well too. Um, let's look at cranes. What if I've got four cranes lined up? So when one crane is consuming, the other crane is breaking, I can share that amongst the, the, the actual crane. So I'm actually using energy from another crane to power the one beside it rather than pull it from the grid. So the net effect is I would use less energy occasionally. Um, I think, you know, most of us know about Tesla. Tesla has what they call regenerative braking. Same idea. When I brake, I'm saving the energy. Same thing with an AFE. When I'm braking, I'm reusing that energy in another displacement point. Yeah, that's a good comparison. I think people are familiar with regenerative braking and, you know, well, then when they yeah. came out with hybrids before the electric vehicle, for sure. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. so that's, it's, it's, this really is regenerative. Right. So then I guess other than just sharing within the plant also, I guess that's, I guess, using the DC bus, right? Um, and, but I guess also there's some, I just want to make mention of the handouts that we have. Uh, there's yeah. one on from the AESO and just talking about microgrid. Um, so that just maybe talk about that and what we can do about putting power back on the grid. So, I mean, so within Alberta, we have something called our, our, our microgen. So, I mean, this is a report I got from a, a friend of mine. It's from February. So they're looking at, you know, distributed generation within, within the province. Um, this, this, pro, this product itself does have a grid intrakai certification. I know a couple other drive manufacturers that do. This makes it quite unique in the marketplace. So that AFE drive is A, it's low harmonic, but it also is certified like a micro generator. So if you, that's why when you've got, let's say small scale hydro, you could buy a pump to turbine or quadrant drive and actually put power back to the grid. There is some process within the AUC and you apply for it as well. As well. Um, the actual Word document, which I'm sharing today, is a specification I wrote for like a guide farm spec, generic in terms of if you want to do energy recovery in some type of reciprocating load in like small scale hydro or punch press, something where the, the speed is not constant and it overhauls on the loading, this is really a specification to say, I want to drive, it'll do that. So there's your specification there. Good. Um, the last handout actually is um, shared with me from the factory. It is actually solar pumping, which is very unique. This, it's a large case study out of Peru where they were actually doing large solar field. They are pumping to a reservoir via solar only, and then using that reservoir for irrigation. So again, this is, it's off grid at a very, very large level. So, but just, just in terms of what the product is capable of. And again, same control board, same hardware. This yeah. scale, the scalability. So, I mean, I, I really stress that point. I mean, I've, I've worked in the field and I've been in the point, I've been the person where something goes down and you can't take from the other side, same manufacturer and it doesn't interchange. This is quite unique into being able to have spares. I mean, I think what the COVID shown us over the past year is supply chain is a really, really important piece. And having an inventory or inventory capability that can be inventory one, use many, I think is a real critical piece now. Because people now understand what is supply chain. And I used to be able to buy it every day, and now I can't. So if I have something in the plant, you know, so the people in the office, they're accountants. They can get, yeah. let them get a little bit hot, but the plant runs because that makes the money. So being able to basically use parts internally. Yeah, that's, that's funny. 
it seems like you know, we went from a, a system of having everything on inventory, then we went to just in time. Just in time. And then now with all the, uh, you know, like you said, the logistical issues, global transport is an issue. So now we got to go back to inventory again, you know, to keep plants available, right? So it's, yeah. but it's, I think it's really, you know, what we've learned from both sides of the equation is that we got to inventory smart, right? right. So we, well, just in time's great if you can get it, but what if I can carry just the right parts that get that give me just in time for multiple applications so being able to specify products that will get us a multiple application so yeah okay i think jared has some questions uh coming in so i'll let you uh feel those do. yeah no thanks uh everyone who's sending those in feel free to keep them coming um so the first one we got here is from duane says uh, great job michael well done um and right. He is asking, and maybe we might even need to unmute him for more context if this doesn't make sense, but he's saying, are you saying the DC output is what it can deliver? No, it doesn't deliver DC output. So in, it, um, is Dwayne asking about DC drives or, or DC replacement? Uh, it I'm doesn't say, but... Um, I'm thinking he's just talking about DC drives here. I think where it is Dwayne, we can uh, unmute him as well. Yeah. Okay. There you are. Perfect. Dwayne? I guess when I saw that that drive had a DC, you were talking about connecting direct to DC motors. I just assumed it had a DC out option. No, no. I mean, so, so Dwayne, a lot of companies, you know, there's, I mean, you've probably seen a lot of, there was a lot of install base in this province, in Western Canada, of DC drives and DC motors. No. It's not, it doesn't replace a DC drive, but it has the capability as a VFD and an AC side to be able to provide with a, a company motor. I mean, I think you're Dwayne from WEG, correct? Yes. Yeah, so I'm, so personally, I've used that drive with a WEG motor to do DC, to do a DC drive motor replacement. So it has a capability and the intelligence within the programming to be able to do field oriented control emulation with an AC motor and a drive. Because typically if they if the DC drive is going, that motor, the DC motor is probably fairly old as well, too. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Okay, what do we got next there? Jared? Yeah. Yeah, so we have a question from Lyle. Um, in regards to the AFE regenerative drive on a pump jack application, can you implement this function to work if the power company will not allow you to put power back on the grid? That is an excellent question. So we had this exact application down in Wyoming. So we went to local AC, we mean the oil producer is going, I love it. So yeah. So even though they won't take the power back, there's a number of ways you can actually accomplish this. One, you are getting a low harmonic drive. So a, as we have her, typical, an AC drive with a braking resistor, we'll have fairly high harmonic content, and you'll actually use more energy if you have high harmonics. Think of it as like dirty power. So if I use an AFE on a pump jack without, yes, I can still use it. Uh, side benefit of this as well too is because essentially now I have almost infinite braking, you can actually set up your rod control with such preciseness that I can have very good rod control because I'm not limited by the braking now. I've got the grid to brake. I have almost infinite braking now. Uh, if you remember the old Mark IIs from Lufkin, they were mechanically designed to go up fast, down slow. The reason being is I want to get past the gas and then let it stretch. So because you've got that infinite braking, you can actually set up almost like a dual speed on the mo on the VFD. So when I go up, I'm quick, and I can actually drop it by a preset amount. So when it come around on the jack, it slows and I get stretch. A normal drive will trip on the DC bus. This won't. So yeah, for pump jack application, it is excellent. Okay. Um, okay, uh, we we have another question from Duane here again. Um, do some motors work better than others on regen drives? That's an interesting question, Duane. Um, in in my 
personal testing. We used to have, when I had my company, we actually had a pump jack in the back. And I was able to actually test a large number of motors. Any motor manufacturer with lots of copper, very good um, winding characteristics will have more. Um, I do know of one manufacturer who we had almost 25, 30% more efficient operation on the regenerative side. So when using that induction motor as a generator, yeah, I mean, I will say it, and I grew up with Westinghouse products, uh, the WEG motor works exceptional. And I think it really comes down to how they wind it and how it's optimized. So yeah, so yeah. Okay, uh, we have another one here from Faraz. Uh, what is the approximate price for adding a VFD on a thousand horsepower pump and delivery as well? Uh, so price and approximate delivery for VFD on a thousand horsepower pump, what would you expect? Okay, so uh, thousand, thousand horsepower pump. So what's the vo what voltage is the motor? First of all, I need to know that. Uh, two, how many poles and motors? So am I, what, what's my RPM? On the actual motor itself as well too. If you, can, if you give me that, I can give you a pretty rough idea. Yeah, for us, if you wanted to, uh, you can ask me. Yeah. Hey, just let me Hello. Hello and thank you. Uh, are, are you. Do you hear me? Yes. yes. Hear uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation. Uh, we are talking about uh, 50, uh, 1500 RPM. Okay, so is it 50 hertz? Uh, uh, in Canada, is. Uh, oh. 60 hertz. Yeah. 60 hertz. So, and we're 1600 RPM? Or Something 18? like that. Yeah. 1800. Okay. Um, and what's the voltage of the, of, of the motor for us? 460. Oh, 460. Um, 1000 horsepower. So, you can probably 750 kilowatts. Um, would you mount the drive outside or would it be in an indoor uh, air conditioning system a building? Is it, it, it is inside the building. Oh, so it'd be in the MCC room essentially. Yes. So yeah, NEMA one, a uh, thousand horse. So you're looking at probably a four pole motor. We'd be in probably that eighty-five, ninety thousand dollar mark. Thirty uh, coming again, how much? Eighty-five to ninety thousand. Uh, Canadian dollar. Eighty-five to ninety thousand uh, dollars. Canadian dollar. Canadian, yes, Canadian, yes, Canadian. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, and that. <laughs> Canadian USD spread is getting closer, so you know. Thank you very much. Maybe it'll be one to one by the time we're through this. We'll see how much they so. keep printing. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we have another question here from our very own Ralph uh, Dickow. So, are these VFDs also available in five kilovolt, forty-one sixty volt, and seven kV range? No. This is a low voltage line. Um, what Santerno's done, obviously, with the large horsepower and up to 5,000 horsepower, they, they take their 690 volt and they use a step up, step down type of scenario. So, with typically for medium voltage app applications such as this, they will take a prepackaged encapsulated uh, transformer, step it down, do your actual speed control within the 690 volt application, and step it back up through a sine wave filter on the output. Um, the reason why they have 500,000 installed inverters is there's a large portion of those actually is step is a step down, step up type solution because it, it actually is quite more cost effective to do that. It's a little more real estate. I do realize that, but that is the application. They do not have a native um, medium voltage solution. I didn't realize you could, uh, you know, oh, yeah. if they step down and step up because I thought you'd lose too much in the translation there. but. And this is interesting because remember that we talked about 98.5% efficient on the power electronics, right? And they have a very good uh, design transformer solution, uh, which is made by, I think, a partner company within Italy fairly close to their plan. So their supply chain is very tightly integrated within the engineering side. Okay. Um, we have another one here from Ralph, and he's asking um, Do these VFDs require an air conditioner or? Under what situation would um, an AC be required if not? Um, um, in my career, the only time we've ever used a air conditioner on these VFDs was when we put them to the northern part of Oman, where it was 60 degrees centigrade outside. Okay. Yeah, wow. so, 
Yeah, I mean, and and at that point, you had to keep your wrenches in the bucket of water because you couldn't touch them. It was so hot. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, I'll I'm just about out of time here. Yeah, I'll yeah. last a last question, please. Uh, I think that's it for questions that I see in um, in the list there, right, Jared? I don't see anything else. Okay. Yeah, no, if uh, anyone else has one, speak now or forever hold your peace until you get an email out to us, which we'll, we'll gladly answer anything you might think of later. Um, send that through us to the uh, contact page on the website, and we'll make sure um, we get you in touch with uh, Michael and, and get what you need there. So I guess just I want to mention, uh, so Michael, it's okay if we put a PDF version of this presentation up oh, on sure, there? Yeah. yeah, please do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so go to the event um, posting, if you will, and we'll attach that uh, there so you guys can get them there. And then also, I guess, the handouts as well. We might as well put them there for uh, for you guys' uh, information as well. So if you want more information, there's the Centerno website. There's the Vittori Power website. Um, and, of course, Michael's contact information is there. And feel free to reach out to him. Uh, anything else? Any other parting words? I guess, well, stay tuned. I mean, we'll... See you back next month. Um, that's it. Good. Hey, hey, thanks, Andrew. Oh, thanks, Jared. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Okay, that was fun. We'll talk to you later. Talk to you soon.